Uh, my name is Kimo Manulelewa, uh, President of the Independence Ethnic Council. Just want to thank you, uh, the city, and also Power Like um, Park and Rec, for all your support the last three years. Uh, we are getting ready to celebrate our fourth um, International Day of the Child. <clears throat> we are going to move it from um, Hill Park down to the Fairmount Business District area. Um, with the help of uh, some local businesses and also Truman Medical Center, uh, allow us to use the park uh, behind the building, the parking lot and area. I have here tonight is a young lady, Yvette, that's been working um, with uh, Bill Rogers and some member of the community uh, putting it together. So if you don't mind, I'll introduce you sure. and her and uh, to you and uh, she'll talk a little bit about it. Good evening, and thank Good you for evening. having me. Uh, like Kimo mentioned, we are going on our fourth annual International Day of the Child. I am in charge of stage performances. And this is a great event because it celebrates children all over the world. Uh, we wanted to take the focus away from, uh, there's an, uh, you know, the idea that Cinco de Mayo is a holiday when really it isn't. What is an, an international holiday and a very well celebrated is the International Day of the Child. And although in different countries they have different ways of celebrating, the idea is to celebrate our children. And so it is, like we said, our fourth annual, and it's a way for our, our multicultural community to come together and celebrate the different countries through their traditional foods, music, and dance, and it's all focused on our children. There are, did you know that there are more than 20 languages spoken in the independent school district as well as the Florida Sage School District? And uh, International Day of the Child gives us the opportunity to honor so many international unique cultures, El Salvador, Russia, Guatemala, Mexico, USA, Samoa, and Honduras, just to name a few. Uh, last year we had a spectacular turnout and like Kimo said, it was at Hill Park, but we're offering the same great event and this time it will be in the Fair Fairmount community. So we wanna thank you for uh, this opportunity and we'd love to invite you guys to come experience dozens of cultures for the entire family through music, food, and stage performances. This is a fun educational event and the best part, it's absolutely free to everyone who comes out. Um, thank you so much for your support and um, as we celebrate children in the world. Okay, so it's May 5th, tell yes. us what time. Uh, we have decided on, um, from 11 to 2 p.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Any other questions Any I can answer for you? And, and your name is? Libet Ojeda. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you for coming, and we will certainly help get the word out. It's a great event, and thank hope you. for beautiful weather that day. Right, we're well. hoping so, too. Yes. The weather, it's hard to tell with that anymore, but yeah. we're hoping for it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Libet. Okay, now we will move on to the staff reports. Um, our first is the performance measure dashboard, third quarter update, Mr. City Manager. Yes, good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. Part of our commitment with Independence for All is to provide the Council with regular updates about our demonstrated progress in implementing the goals and objectives of that plan. So we have asked our Truman Fellow, Kristen Ayers, to um, compile this information and provide the Council with our third quarter uh, update this evening. So I will turn it over to Ms. Ayers. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Kristen Ayers here with your third quarter performance measure update. First, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of this dashboard for those who may not have seen it yet. Um, the performance measures dashboard is really built around the strategic plan that you all adopted last year. And there are specific measures for each of the four goals for customer focus, financial sustainability, growth, and quality. And really the purpose of these measures is to help us determine if the strategies we're using are helping us reach the objectives laid out in the plan. So there are approximately 60 measures that cover almost all of the city departments, as well as many measures from the Citizen Satisfaction Survey. Most of these are updated quarterly, but the Citizen Satisfaction Survey only happens um, every two years, so those take a little longer. And then this is actually on the city's website, so if you look at the dashboard on there, you can really dig into the measures further. So it will show the, the four goal categories and you can click on that and see each measure for that goal. And then dig further if you wanna look at a measure specifically, it will show some historical data to look for trends. It talks about um, how we calculate the measure and really why it's important to look at. 
So this is the high level overview of how we did on quarter three on our overall goals. So the color shown for each um, goal is a sum average of the measures inside of that goal. So this shows that three of the four goals we met, and that was the customer focused, financially sustainable, and growth. So that means that the majority of the measures within that goal were met or surpassed. And then quality had just a few measures that were either yellow or red that brought that to yellow. So this overall picture actually looks the same as the quarter two update, but there are some changes I wanted to highlight for you. And then just to mention, um, the color of the goal, if it's green, means that it was met or surpassed. Yellow means that this quarter we did better, even though they didn't meet their goal. And then red uh, means that we actually did worse than last quarter. So first I'll go over some of our wins from this quarter. Um, and really, this one has been a win every quarter so far, but I wanted to highlight it because it just keeps doing so well. And this is really in our communications growth. So this is one area of our customer service that has continued to surpass its goals and that's communicating with the public. So all four of our social media platforms have grown significantly this quarter in followers and likes, which is really important as this is how we best can communicate messages to the public. So we saw an 18% increase in Facebook followers this quarter, which brings the total number of likes to 7,500. And there's also a huge 34% jump in Instagram followers. And a lot of this growth we can attribute to um, some of the innovative things that Meg Lewis, our PIO, has been doing, including the What's That posts, which highlights new businesses in the community, which people really seem to like. Um, for instance, on March 14th, she posted um, a What's That highlighting the new Taco John's, and that received over 600 likes and 816 shares. People also interacted really well with the 175th anniversary of the fire department posts and the new farmer's market groundbreaking. And then Twitter and Nextdoor also surpassed their goals of growth for the quarter. So next, the next win we have is new jobs created. So the Independence Economic Development Council um, gave me their quarterly report and there was 163 new jobs created in the community during this quarter. The biggest of that came from an expansion at Orbital ATK and then Sarpino's Pizza and a couple of additions of startups in the community. <coughs> Next we have pothole service requests, which I think this is a great customer service one to point out. Uh, last quarter, 78% of pothole service requests were completed in three days or less. In this quarter, 93% of them were. So 26 out of 28 requests were completed in less than three days and the average repair time was actually 0.97 days, which is great. And then lastly, I wanna talk about the percentage of code enforcement cases that were started proactively. So the goal each quarter is that 8% of codes enforcement cases are started by our codes enforcement officers and not started by a citizen complaint. So again, they surpassed their goal this quarter by starting 18% of their cases proactively. And this is partially high because there was another proactive court or code enforcement that happened at the end of December. So I just wanted to update you on that really quick. Um, we did the 40 highway court or code enforcement. And this initiative involves systematically using proactive code enforcement on major corridors, the visible corridors in our city. So this was started uh, in December and ended in mid-January. And the objective of this is really to address property maintenance and zoning issues along those visible corridors. And during this initiative, there were 238 inspections done and 116 of those had violations. But ultimately, only 23 tickets were issued, seven property abatements, and one building was tagged as dangerous. So next, I just wanna highlight a couple of the goals that didn't meet their goal, but got close and improved over last quarter. So if you remember last quarter, I talked about the average answer time at our customer, utility customer service center. And in the first quarter, it took eight minutes and 31 seconds for us to answer the phone. And then last quarter was a huge drop to six minutes and 30 seconds. And happy to report that again, this quarter it dropped a bunch to five minutes and 39 seconds. So we're super close to that goal of five minutes. And I've gotten a few updates from Dan Montgomery in the last week that even this month, it's getting lower and lower before, below the five minutes. So getting really close to that goal. And then another exciting thing to report on is the police response times for priority one calls um, went down this quarter. So the national goal is that these times will be at five minutes or less. And the last quarter, this measure was in the red category at eight minutes and 40 seconds. But this quarter, happy to report that it dropped by 23 seconds to eight minutes and 17 seconds. 
Um, and this can be attributed to, we had a ton of vacancies at the beginning of this fiscal year and we've gotten most of them filled. And so a lot of these newly hired officers have just finished their field training and been placed in patrol. And there are a few more that need to finish their field training so they'll be placed in patrol too. So this time will continue to go down. And this is a huge improvement, um, especially because there's been a lot of manpower intensive calls that they've had to go on that, that usually affect response times, but going down and should continue to go down. So that's really the things I wanted to highlight for you this quarter. Um, there'll be a lot more updates next quarter for the year end where we'll be able to show you how much things changed over the year, but I'd like to open it up for any questions or comments and maybe some of our experts in the room can help answer those that I can't. Okay, thank you, Kristen. Are there any comments or questions from the council? Yes. <laughs> um, I did have a question. Um, I always kind of think of this sort of in conjunction with our open data um, that we are also continually working on is putting more uh, relevant data sources out onto the website for pe people to access and, and use and manipulate in ways that are help them to get the information that they want. Is there are we also tracking, I mean, is it being used? Are people are taking advantage of it? I think it's great information and our intent with it, obviously, is to be accountable to our citizens um, about uh, what our priorities are and how we're meeting those goals, but are we keeping, is it getting, is the word getting out? I think forums like this, may are important to help with that. I will also tell you that when we get questions or comments from citizenry about our progress or you know what how, how's this going or something we do utilize this as staff to help communicate about that so more than just saying well we feel like we're doing a good job with code enforcement we yeah. try to use these numbers to show the growth and the progress that we've made and to, to justify where we're at but okay. I, I don't know that we have a, our fingertips or readily available mechanism of checking how frequently people are you know at three in the morning checking this or anything <laughs> yeah. like that but um, I, I, it has helped us have a more uh, sophisticated, enlightened discussions with our citizens and with you as a council about our progress yeah. and, and our shortcomings, to be truthful. Yeah, well, that's important, too. Um, I know that um, periodically we've highlighted some successes, like code enforcement. I mean, that, are, and so, you know, maybe that's a way to do it because, as you say, we know our social media is very, very active, that we're, we reach a lot of people that way. So, um, you know, I just think it's important for us to continue to find ways to let the public know that it's there for them to scrutinize. You gave us, um, you know, a great overview, but there's more detail that people can dive into if it's something that they're particularly interested in. Indeed. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Okay, our next report is the utility billing project update, Mr. City Manager. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Um, for some time now, we've of course been working on migrating off of our legacy <coughs> utility billing system that handles our 56,000 utility accounts for our independent citizens and businesses. Um, that transition has been methodical as we're trying to jump forward several generations on that. But um, I asked staff to come in tonight and update this council and our community on where that transition is at. Uh, the shortcomings that we still have, the challenges in front of us, but also the um, near-term opportunities that are there. So I would ask uh, Jason Newkirk from our Technology Services Department to come up and share a, a brief update with the council. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. I'm Jason Newkirk, the IT manager for the Technology Services Department. And uh, yeah, I'm here to give you an update on where we're at with the utility billing system. Um, First thing I'm gonna do is talk to you a little bit about the uh, current system and why we needed to move away from it. Uh, it's an in-house developed system. It was developed about 34 years ago, so it's been around for a little while. Um, it's an entirely text-based system full of uh, function keys and typing in commands to navigate around it. So as you might imagine, it's a little bit uh, challenging for a new staff member coming in to be able to, to quickly learn that system. Uh, it's also kind of time consuming to extract and analyze data out of that system. Usually if a staff member needs a report, uh, it involves us having to have a programmer develop that uh, report for them. 
Uh, also, it, just from a maintenance standpoint, it's developed using old programming languages, COBOL and RPG, uh, which is something that uh, less and less people know uh, is every day that goes by. Um, and same with the platform that it's on. It runs on an IBM platform that uh, is a, a little bit out of date at this point in time. So just to give you an idea of what I've been talking about, this is a, a screenshot of the existing system. Like I said, all, all text, no, no using your mouse here. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, it's, it's been around for 35 years, and it really has served the, the city pretty well, but it's definitely time for an upgrade. So we selected um, a piece of software called CIS Infinity. It's by a company called Advanced Utility Systems. Um, and we formed a project team to begin working on that, uh, comprised of people from technology services, Power and Light, Water, WPC, and Finance. So CIS Infinity, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a graphical user interface, so it's uh, much easier to just look at and, 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 and begin to learn. Uh, you can look at it, and a lot of people could begin navigating around it immediately without uh, much training and with uh, a small amount of training you can really start to dive into it. It's really going to be a lot more flexible as we go through the years. You know, you always have changes in your business needs and your business processes. And uh, so you have to be able to adapt your system to that. It's a highly configurable system uh, so that we'll be able to adapt to those future changing business needs as time goes on. Uh, it also has the ability to integrate more easily with external systems. So going back to those business needs, if there ever comes a, a, a secondary and external system, like the, the new ERP system, for example, that comes along that we need to create an interface to, we're going to have a lot uh, easier time doing that now uh, than we are doing that with the future system than, than we do with the current system. Uh, also, accessing information and analyzing data. This is the thing that gets me excited. This, this is so much better on this new system. There's a few different ways that users can do it, um, other than just the screens that are, are provided by the system. They also have things called filters, and this is something that, that any of the users can do without a lot of technical knowledge. Um, they can go and take large piece, chunks of data, um, and they can filter it down to find what they need. So a good example of this is if you needed to know all the water customers that were on a specific water rate, you could quickly filter that and get, get that list of customers. Uh, this, the second way that you get information is through reports. The system came with a lot of reports pre-built, and then also uh, throughout the process, we've identified new reports that needed to be created and, and had the vendor create those. And so that's um, another way to, to get more complex queries out of the system. And those are easy for the end user to run and then take that data and do what they need to with it. It's also hosted on a Windows Server platform and Microsoft SQL Server uh, database platform, which is a little bit more in the, the industry norm. And so we've got a lot of staff members that, that know how to support that system. And so we're going to have a lot better time moving forward to be able to support that system. So here's a screenshot of the new system. I know it's kind of kind of small and yeah, a little washed out. Um, but uh, really along that top band there, those are all the buttons that uh, are kind of some of the common tasks that an end user may use. And then right below that, that's the info band, and that's uh, kind of one of the highlights of the system. It really gives you a snapshot of, you know, maybe 90% of the information that uh, an end user is going to need whenever they're looking up a customer. And then below that is a series of tabs. And those tabs are where you can really start drilling down into the information and look up, you know, bill history, meter readings, transactions, and things like that. So I, I briefly mentioned uh, integrations, you know, future integrations before. Uh, we're, we're starting out with a lot of different touch points on the system. Um, we've got you know, a lot of input and output from this system. So everything starting with paper output, you know, the bills that need to be printed out, um, and then going to, you know, electronic output such as e-bills or sending information to the outage management system, the CAD systems, things like that. And then uh, we also have a lot of full two-way integrations. A really good example of that is the website uh, where customers can go, they can log in, they can view information about their account, 
Uh, so that's information going one way, but they can also uh, make a payment, and so that's going back into that system. So as you can see, it's not, not just a standalone system. It really touches a lot of other things. So going to the, the website, so this is, uh, I wanted to give you a few screenshots of the customer web portal. So customers will be able to log in uh, and they'll be able to view information about their account. They'll be able to view billing history, payments. Um, they'll also be able to view usage history. Uh, we're able to give them some kind of some graphs to show them their usage trends over time. And then of course we'll, we're giving them the ability to be able to pay uh, their bill online. So next is the new bill. So this is kind of a, a zoomed in a little bit. We've kind of chopped the, bo the bottom portion here is uh, usually the, the stub that they tear off and that's what you send in with your payment. So I've excluded that there so you can actually uh, hope to read this. And uh, it's what we tried to do with the new bill um, is we really wanted to make the front portion very clean and easy to read. We wanted to give the customers access to their current charges, their usage, and their amount due right up front. Um, and so that's what is highlighted on the front of the bill. But for those customers that want to do a little bit more digging, see a little bit more information, uh, the back of the bill is where they're going to want to go. That gives them a breakdown of their charges, the specific things that comprise you know, what they're being charged for each utility, as well as a little more detailed information about their consumption. And uh, to give you kind of a, an update on where we're at today, so we're um, in the process of wrapping up the uh, implementation on this project. We're uh, conducting final testing on the system to ensure that all 60,000 of our customers are billed correctly and they're gonna be able to pay their bill uh, easily on day one. And we're also working with the uh, vendor to determine a go-live date that's after that uh, time that that final testing is completed. Uh, but also when they're going to be able to have the appropriate staff on site here to uh, assist us with that implementation. So that concludes my update, but I'm willing to take any questions that you guys may have. Thanks, Jason. Other comments or questions? Yes, Councilman. Yeah, I have a yeah. few questions. Um, sure. And some of this may have been covered before, so it may, may be questions that I asked before. All right, go for it. So is is this new system cloud-based or do we have a server and a backup system? Yeah, so it's uh, hosted on-premises, so by us, and yes, we've got- uh, Our own server. Uh, our own servers with backup servers, yes. Okay, so we have, we have multiple backups, or is mm -hmm. it backed up also in the cloud, or? Uh, nope, uh, we've got our backup uh, location physical. in two different, yeah, two different physical locations. Okay. Yes. Okay. And will this eventually interface with uh, digital meters if we eventually go there? Yeah, so uh, we've, we've talked to them about that and it, they've, uh, the vendor Advanced Utility Systems has integrated with a lot of uh, different AMI vendors before. Okay. So yeah, they, they will be able to, it's just a matter of determining the details on that. And do we have a contract for upgradability of the software? I know a lot of software companies We'll upgrade it every year, sometimes multiple times a year. And right. do we have a contract for those? Yeah. Uh, and we, we have to pay a fee, I'm sure. Yeah, we pay year. continual um, maintenance, which includes upgrades on the software. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yes, Councilman. These clouds are the cumulus strategy. No, never <laughs> mind. Uh, <laughs> this is great, this readout. What's fuel adjustment? <laughs> You know, a, a, anything related to rates, I'm going to have to turn to folks from our utility department. To, so to you gave it a name, and yeah, did, I, does anyone listen, want I want to appreciate you telling me why we hired you too, because of how bad the other one was. <laughs> <laughs> and don't we have digital now? Do we have digital readers now? No. No, no? I thought we were trading out the new ones. Uh, now, meter reading is going to be conducted uh, currently the same way that it is today. Uh, okay, so you go out and read them still, and uh, it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your same answer to collect answers? The, the, the fuel adjustment, that's one of the things that was outlined in the, our audit for IPL was yeah, the and fuel I'll, adjustment cost. I'll, I'll oversimplify, but <laughs> okay. that, that refers to the, the cost of the power that's being supplied and added to the customer's bill. So 
occasionally that number has climbed up over time. The recommendation um, from the management audit of last July was to reset that number back to a base of zero, just to, and to do that every, you know, some interval of time so that we don't ever let that number climb beyond what's reasonable or realistic. But it, it has an incremental adjustment over time as we've, um, through our purchase power contracts. We adjust according to our contract. Right. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. Um, this takes us to other topics. Um, I do have one other topic, and then I'll open up to council for any other discussion. Um, we had directed the city clerk some time ago to evaluate our boards and commissions. We had a number of vacancies, um, some boards and commissions that were difficult to fill because either they meet only as needed or so infrequently that it was difficult to um, recruit citizens to serve on them. So she has completed that evaluation and talking with the um, various city departments and came up with some recommendations on some boards and commissions to eliminate or combine. Um, you all have received um, an email from the city clerk with those recommendations. I have prepared a memo with with my thoughts on how to move forward with, with these. Um, if you haven't had a chance to read it, then we, we certainly don't need to give direction tonight, but we do need to uh, give the city clerk some direction on how to proceed with some, if not all, of these recommendations from staff. So has everybody seen the memo? Okay. Um, Please read it and we'll, um, we'll take this up at the next study session um, or sooner if you just want to communicate by email, um, then the city clerk can um, collect that information and, and move forward appropriately. Any other topics for to bring before the council this evening? Mr. City Manager, anything this evening? Nothing tonight, thank you. Okay, we are adjourned.